All right, welcome back. So this is part two of Chase the Pizza tutorial that you'll find on Make Code Arcade. So in the first part, if you haven't watched that, go back and watch part one. It should be in a playlist or the prior video somewhere, depending on where you're looking at this video. But in the first part, we added a background color. That's what we did here. We added a character or what in graphics programming we call a sprite. And so we just gave it a variable name, my sprite. That was the default name. We added a sprite to our um, game and we told it was a kind of player, and then we gave it a command or some code to allow, uh, um, allow us to control our character with our mouse, or sorry, with our arrow keys on our keyboard, or you could also use a controller. If you have an Xbox controller, um, any USB controller that you can hook up to a PC generally will work well. Um, I believe some PlayStation ones will work as well, as long as Windows recognizes it as a game controller. Um, you can do that. But if you don't have a game controller, a USB one, or a Bluetooth one hooked up to your computer, you can also just use your mouse and keyboard, and that works just as well. So we stopped on part five. We're going to um, go through uh, a second part here, and then there'll be a part three where we'll finish up. So we'll go on to step, uh, sorry, this is step six. Looked like a five, but that's step six. We're going to go on to step seven. So that's part two here is going to start on step seven. So if you didn't watch part one, that'll take you up to step six. But now we're going to start with step seven. All right, so let's open the sprites toolbox and drag out another sprite. So basically we want to drag out another character or another sprite that will allow our player, our, our player that's right here, to be able to chase the pizza. So to do that, we need another sprite. So we're going to go out here and get another sprite, and we're going to put it inside of the set start block, just like we did before. If you remember from part one, you don't want your code hanging out, out here. It kind of grays out and gets kind of X'd out here, so it, that's... That basically means you have a bug, and the computer is telling you, hey, there's a mistake there. Again, the computer's not smart enough to tell you what to do, generally. Um, in this case, it kind of does, because it's giving you instructions up here, because it's part of the tutorial. But that, if you see anything grayed out like that, it means the computer doesn't understand it. So in this case, we need to put it here, and now it, we have it um, kind of full color, so we know that it's working. Um, and we're going to now add our pizza to our game. So let's go to the next step, step eight. And we're going to change this here. We're going to rename the variable. So that's something we didn't do in part one. Notice the, the variable up here is called my sprite. And we didn't talk too much about a, what a variable is, but a variable is basically just a place in the computer's memory. So it's slightly different than if in math class when you learn about a variable. It, there are some similarities, but in computer programming, really think of a, um, a variable as a place in the computer's memory. So we're going to say to the computer, hey, I want you to put in your memory and we're going to rename it. My sprite is not the best name. We're going to go down here to rename variable. I'm going to name it pizza because we're going to actually have a character or a sprite in our game that looks like a pizza. And so we've renamed our variable pizza. We could go up here and rename this if you want to rename your variable up here. Like my name is Mike. So maybe I want to, and I'm the player in my game. So I can name my variable Mike if I wanted. Now I'm the player in my game. And notice it automatically changed some of my code. Because when you change variables, it's important that if there's multiple instances or multiple names of that variable, that you change all of them. So notice the computer did that for us automatically. So we're going to go here to keep it at pizza. right? Now we're going to choose a pizza sprite. So I believe that's what we're going to do in the next screen or the next step. So we're on step nine. It now wants us to change this to kind of food. So it's not a player, it's food. And these are special what are called variable types. And we're not going to get too involved in that. But as you get more advanced in your programming, and when you learn, start, if you want to learn how to make 3D games, you know, games like Fortnite and The Last of Us and those types of games, um, sprite uh, types are really, or variable types are really important because you have all different types of variables. And so in this case, it's pretty simple. We only can, it can either be a player. You can make projectiles. So if you want to make a shooting game or like a space game, that we'll, I'll have a video later on how to make a space game. We'll be using that for kind of our laser blasters. Um, food is exactly that, something you're going to eat. And then enemy would be, you know, what it sounds like, it's like somebody you're attacking or going against. In this case, we're going to choose food. That's what it tells us to do. And it's kind of obvious that pizza is a type of food. Sometimes the type of variable is not obvious, but in this case, it is. So we'll go to the next step. And now it's going to say, go here and choose your pizza sprite. So just like we did with our player, this time though, we could draw food if we wanted. If you are good at pixel art or want to uh, experiment with pixel art. This is a great opportunity to do that because you can basically make anything you can imagine in pixel art. And there are a lot of good tutorials online. I'm not a great pixel artist. It's actually something I'm working on as one of my personal goals to try to get better at pixel art because I do really like the aesthetic and how it looks. I'm just not very good at it. So in this case, I'm just going to go to the gallery 
and you notice there's some food this top row you want to get this pizza here notice there's a couple pizzas and if you scroll down there might be one or two more but we want this one in the first row uh, on my screen it's one two three four five six over so the column six um, this one's a lot bigger and you can try that one but I think you, what you'll find out is it might be too big for our game so we're gonna choose a smaller one of course if you don't want to have a chase the pizza game maybe you want chase the taco or ch chase the cherry or ta uh, chase the ice cream or chase the donut or any of these you could you could use your you could use one of these sprites or again you can make up your own game and change your sprite to be whatever you want but in this case I'm gonna keep the pizza I'm gonna hit done and notice what will happen now I have my pizza it's in the exact same location on my screen as my player and we obviously don't want that because now I can't see my player now I can move my player around but notice when I go over the pizza nothing happens and we want our pizza to disappear because the whole point of this game is that we want to be able to eat our pizza and we want it to disappear and then we want the pizza to go somewhere else so we want to get that set up and so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next screen <clears throat> And we're going to, this is exactly what this is going to tell us, step 11. It's going to say, go back to sprites. And notice here we have this option that says, kind of a long sentence here or a long uh, segment, but it basically says, when two sprites collide each other when, or when they overlap. And this is a huge thing in computer game programming. It's called collision detection. And so think about any computer game that you've ever played, any video game you've ever played. You, you, you probably have lots of characters or lots of sprites running into each other. Uh, overlapping with each other and so you have to put some code in to tell the computer hey when two sprites collide or when they run into each other we, I want something to happen and so that's called collision detection and in make code arcade one of the many reasons why it's such a good way to learn video game programming because it makes it very easy for you to get started with that and then as your games get more advanced you can you know kind of customize your code a little more All right so we've done what it said there so I'm gonna go to next we're on step 12 <clears throat> we are going to now it says in the on sprite overlaps other sprite box click on the second player so I'm gonna go here where it says player here's the first player but I'm gonna to go to the second one and we're gonna choose change it to food because what this says is when a sprite of type player collides with another sprite of type food so that means when my player it's a tight here's my player and it's a tight player or a kind player when it collides or runs into the pizza here's what we want to happen so on step 13 we are going to put some code in there that says change score. So we're going to go to our scene. No, sorry, we're going to go to info and change score by one. And that'll give us a score counter. So now every time our sprite runs into the pizza, we'll get a point. And notice what's happening here. Because it's constantly colliding, we're getting those points. Now if I move away, it stops. And if I go back on, it starts counting up again. So right now, this is a ridiculously simple game, right? I can get as many points as I want. And you could actually stop right here. And I could, you could probably think of some interesting ways to turn this into a game, right? But we want our pizza to be able to move around. Because right now, our game's too easy. We can get all the points we ever want in the world. And nothing will ever stop us, right? So we've got to make it a little harder, okay? So that's a good place to stop for part two. We'll do part three next. That'll be the last part. So see if you can get your code up to this point. If you want to ways, if you want to look for some ways to customize this, maybe change your pizza. Right? It doesn't have to be chase the pizza game. It could be chase whatever you want. Um, change if you didn't do it in part one. Maybe change your player sprite um, or play around with this. And maybe you could even make a simple game by just changing. What if you went to negative one? Watch what happens. So now negative one, right, should be subtraction. So notice it started at zero. And now it's counting backwards from zero because we say add negative one or change score by negative one. When it says change score, you can basically just think of that as adding. So it's adding negative one, which is the same thing as subtracting. Okay. So we'll stop there, get this working, and then we'll go to part three for the final, uh, final part of our game. Have fun.